today I'm going to be building a Lord of the Rings themed mechanical keyboard. I've actually had all the parts needed since May, but I wanted to share this build this week to celebrate the newly released Rings of Power series. To start, I'll be opening up the case I bought from KBV fans. I specifically wanted a wooden case for this build, so I went with the 65% hot swap kit in the rosewood option. This case is a tray mount made of real organic wood, and the USB port is located on the left side with a brass plate detail surrounding it. The rubber feet are already installed. The case also came with a matching wrist dress, which comes in a separate box and its own rubber feet. So far, I'm really liking the quality of the case and wrist dress, and I think the rosewood material is going to pair really well with the keycaps I have planned for this build. Because I purchased the case as a DIY kit, it also came with screws to go along with the tray mount, plate foam, case foam, a brass plate, a black USB-C cable, cherry screw and stabilizers, and the hot swap PCB. To begin this build, I put down my pink American Haptics work mat, which you can get 5% off by using my code MOCHI. I carefully removed the PCB from the packaging and plugged in the included USB-C cable. I connected it to my MacBook and opened up Fire, then grabbed my pink fine tip tweezers from Stationery Stash. I went along the back of the PCB and touched the tweezers to each hot swap socket to make sure that it was in good working order. Before unplugging it, here's a look at the RGB, but I'll most likely be turning it off anyway since it doesn't match the overall look of the build. For stabilizers, I'll be using my TX stabilizers from PK Keyboards instead. I really like these because they are clip-in and I've had good experiences using them with past builds. I'm using the 6.5 unit kit in black. I took out all the stabilizers I needed and disassembled them, then I brought out my Switch Keys brush kit to grab a brush and 205G0 that I'll be applying from my Kinetic Labs palette. Don't forget that I like to lube the wires with my grease syringe kit later on, so I'll be skipping that step for now. I went ahead and reassembled everything in the meantime. As I mentioned, these are clip-in, so there are no screws required or included for the stabilizer kit. They pop right into the PCB, and all you have to do is add a stab popper to each side of the back to reduce the chances of wire pop-out. These are honestly some of the easiest stabilizers to use, and they're an improvement to the cherry stab design with double shot stems with palm on the outside and a TPU and palm mix on the inside. Now that the stabilizers are installed, I want to use my grease syringe kit from the Keydot company to lube the wires. If you want to check this kit out, make sure to find the link down below and use my code MOCHI for 5% off. As I applied it to each wire end, I used a stem holder to help me move the grease around inside of it. I also grabbed some of the switches I'll be using and added them to the stabilizers so that I could try out a few keycaps on it to test out how they sound and feel. I did fine tune a few, then remove the switches and keycaps once I was happy. For switches, I'll be going with SP Star Yanyu switches. I purchased these from Prevail Key Co. and these are linear switches with full polycarbonate housing and a palm stem. I lubed these with 205G0 and added films as well. Before adding them to the plate, I wanted to add my plate foam, so I took it out of the bag and laid it over the PCB. Then I grabbed my brass plate and added a few switches to the corners and edges to help me guide the plate onto the PCB and create my PCB sandwich. Once everything was aligned, I added the rest of my switches. I happen to really like these switches and I definitely like the housing materials and the feel of these, but I did purchase them specifically because of the color. I really wanted everything in this build to match visually and these were the best option I found. After all the switches were added, I plugged it in again and used the key checker on Baya to make sure that they were all working and that no switch pins were bent. Since everything was good to go, it's time to add it to the tray mount case. I opened up the bag containing the case foam, then placed it into the bottom of the case. The PCB sandwich goes in next and will sit right on top. I'll need to secure it with the included screws, so I brought out my Fantic E1 Pro Mini Precision Screwdriver. There are a total of six standoffs to screw into, and they're pretty easy to secure. Here's how the build looks so far. Now that I'm done with most of the assembly, I'm going to remove my work mat. My thoughts on this kit so far is that it's very simple to assemble, and I love how the kit came with everything I need to create a well-rounded build. 
At the time of filming this video, this DIY kit on the KBD Fans website is listed for $119 USD. If you're looking for a wooden keyboard case, I definitely recommend checking this one out, so I'll leave a link down below for those who are interested. If you haven't guessed by the theme already, I'm going to be using the officially licensed Lord of the Rings Hardcore Elvish Keycap Set. I bought this from Drop a few months ago, and I also made sure to grab the Elvish Extras and Even Star sets. These are dye sublimated PBT and the novelty keycaps include designs of the One Ring, the Eye of Sauron, the White Tree, and many other significant icons from the books. The packaging for each box has an outer sleeve showing off a map of Middle Earth and everything comes in a sturdy plastic tray. This keyboard build is finally coming together, but first I'm going to add the One Ring Artisan keycap also purchased from Drop. This artisan is made by Dwarf Factory, and I chose the water design, which shows the One Ring in the longest river of the Third Age after the first defeat of Sauron. I added it to my escape key. As I added this keycap set to this keyboard, I did need to refer to the drop product page as I chose the version with only elvish characters, and I wasn't quite sure that the keycaps were in the correct order in the tray after they were moved around during shipment. For the extra sets I purchased, I used the green novelties on the bottom row and right column, and the even star novelties on the spacebar and enter key, as well as the arrow keys. I really like this combination, and the pinkish copper tone keys look amazing with this rosewood case. This keyboard is now finished, and I'm very excited to test it out and begin using it. Overall, I'm very happy with my new Lord of the Rings themed keyboard, and after playing it out for many months now, I'm very satisfied with the finished look. I know a lot of my builds feature a lot of pastel colors and Pokemon, but I've been a fan of the Lord of the Rings for a very long time now, and the movie trilogy is honestly my favorite of all time. I'm also a big fan of The Hobbit, and I'm hoping this new series will bring me a lot of inspiration and a new show to look forward to each week. I also had a ton of fun shooting the photos for this theme build, and I've been planning out the props for the last few weeks. My inspiration for my shoot was Bilbo's desk in the Shire where he did all of his writing, so I made sure to style my desk in a similar fashion, but in a slightly more modern way since a mechanical keyboard is the main subject of the shoot. I used morning light for these shots, and again, these photos made me realize how happy I was with the choices I made for the case and switches which go very well with the keycaps. As for the switches and the sound, I knew I'd already be happy with how these switches would feel overall, but combined with the wooden case and brass plate, I'm really loving the unique sound profile and how rich it sounds when typing. I also love the matching wrist dress, and while I didn't feature it in my main photos, it matches the aesthetic very well. The Yanyu switches feel very smooth, and I've had good experiences with all of the SP Star switches I've tried so far. As for the keycaps, I absolutely have no complaints with the quality of this set or its appearance. I'm a huge fan of novelties, so the only thing that would improve it for me is to add a backspace novelty or some shift novelties. Otherwise, the novelties already included are already designed really well, and I think the spacebar and enter keys are my favorite ones. I also really like how the artisan keycap looks with the rest of the keyboard, and the river environment that the ring is set in is very vivid and detailed. Dwarf Factory always does a wonderful job with their resin artisans, and it makes me wish I had the other two designs in my collection as well. At the time of filming this video, everything I use in this build is still available except for the artisan keycap. However, the other two designs for the artisan are still in stock. As usual, I'll be leaving links down below for everything, so if you want to create your own Lord of the Rings build too, I would definitely start there. This was one of the bigger builds I've been planning this year, but I do have more coming up soon. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This build was not sponsored as it was a passion project that I planned by myself, but I do appreciate all of you who support me by checking out my affiliate links. I can't wait to share what I have in store for next week. Thank you all for watching.